human experience comes back to us, to our own experience. And so that's why we don't really know how we are going to be inspired by another person's actions or activity. We don't be, we know the person is a human being. And so if one human being can do something, we can feel that we can do it too. And that's why other human beings can inspire each other. Uh, and that's why it's unfortunate if people feel threatened by other people, because then they cut off the possibility for that kind of inspiration and that kind of growth. I feel that racism or any kind of bigotry toward people because of, you know, race or sex or anything like that makes us losers because you don't know who you're going to get your inspiration from. Some people feel that if they are exposed to someone who is different from them, that this somehow will change them, will make them, well, it will change them, but it won't make them less, it will make them better. No one group of people has all the answers, but all of humanity does. I am inspired by people who rise above their adversity. That's my deepest inspiration. And also, I'm inspired by the fact that if I really, really want to, I think I can do anything. These are the words of Faith Ringgold, author, artist, and a woman of distinction in her time and ours. My mother told stories, everybody told stories. I was a baby, I listened. <laughs> Uh, so my father was an inspiration to me because he he was a very jovial person. As I remember many of those stories, I remember the style in which they were told. I remember how excited I was to, to sit there. I would sit endlessly and listen, and be very quiet so I wouldn't be told to go to bed. And um, I was fascinated that they, they had so many stories to tell. Faith Ringo was born in Harlem on October 8, 1930, to Willie Posey and Andrew Jones. Although her parents divorced at an early age, she was still inspired and encouraged by them both to be self-confident, unique, and artistic. As a child, Faith was sickly. She suffered from severe asthma that caused her to miss out on her first few years of schooling. So up until the second grade, she was homeschooled. And when she was well enough to venture out, her mother exposed her to many different forms of art. From museums to musical performances to plays, her mother made sure that art was present. Her father even bought her her first drawing board and easel. She attended the City College of New York School of Education, where she received her degree in art. Faith is married to Burdette Ringgold and she has two daughters and three grandchildren. Since her early beginnings, she has used her talents to help empower and inspire many others, especially women of color. Being an artist is an opportunity for me to have something to say about the world and to be able to communicate that something to other people and hopefully to have that communication live past my life, which is the turn on. <laughs> That's the greatest turn on there is. Faith began her career as an art teacher, where she taught for almost 20 years. And in the 1960s, when she began painting professionally, her work spoke volumes about the turmoil and struggles that Black Americans were facing during that time. So she created many political paintings. In the beginning, it was hard for her to get her work recognized. Her struggle was made even more difficult because not only was she black, she was also a woman stepping outside of her societal role. With the change of the decade came a shift in her art. Faith began to display artwork using beads and fabric. She included in her artwork soft sculptures and masks inspired by her childhood and her interest in the African culture. Family has always played an important role in her life, and there are many instances of this represented in her work. In 1980, when she created her first painted quilt, Echoes of Harlem, 
It was only natural that she collaborated with her mother, who unfortunately passed away before the final product was able to be completed. Soon after, Faith began using writing on her quilts, which is what she is mainly noted for, painted story quilts. This eventually led to her first children's book, Tar Beach, for which she won the Coretta Scott King Award for illustration and was named a 1992 Caldecott Honor Book. Many of Faith's works can easily be incorporated into the classroom. For instance, in the class at Whitehead Road Elementary where I'm student teaching, my mentor teacher created a lesson using Tar Beach. The class made their own version of Ringo's painted story quilt. Just outside our classroom door is a paper quilt with each student's own hopes and dreams for the future. Much of Faith's work revolves around diversity in the African American culture, so her books will be great at any time, but especially during Black History Month. Here, you will see but a small list of Faith Ringo's literary works and awards that she has gained throughout her lifetime. Her work can be found or has once been displayed on almost all of the seven continents of the world. Faith Ringgold is an extraordinary, talented person. I would have never known about her had I not had this class or done any research on her. If you want to learn more about her, please visit the two websites below. They give loads of information on her works, special events, and appearances. Now, before we begin our book talk, I'll leave you with a few of her words on personal conviction. I can do anything. Nothing is going to stop me in my life. And I'm going to pursue anything that turns me on. I'm not going to hear no. If I want to achieve something, if it excites me, I can do it. <laughs>